Joe Rogan is being accused of promoting misinformation once again. This time, virologist Peter Hotez tore into Rogan on Twitter for hosting Robert F. Kennedy Jr. on his podcast last week, where they talked about COVID, controversial treatments, and called the vaccine into question. Rogan responded in kind Saturday, challenging Hotez to debate RFK Jr., tweeting, quote, Peter, if you claim what RFK Jr. is saying is misinformation, I am offering you $100,000 to the charity of your choice if you're willing to debate him on my show with no time limit. On Sunday night, Hotez appeared to be open to returning to Rogan's show. Here he is on MSNBC's Mehdi Hassan show Sunday night. Let's watch. Is anti-vaccine disinformation, it's always done a lot of damage and harm, but now it's a yeah. lethal force in the United States. And that's why we thats why we have to have that discussion. And I offered to come and talk to go on Joe Rogan again. I've been on a couple of times yeah. and have that discussion with him, but not to turn it into the Jerry Springer show with having RFK Jr. <laughs> on. Right. So he said he would come on again, but not debate RFK Jr. or someone of his ilk. Independent journalist Alex Rosen questioned Hotez over the weekend, confronting him about a potential matchup with the 2024 presidential candidate. Here's a little bit of that. So why are you not like de- going to debate uh, RFK on Joe Rogan's podcast? Oh, come on. That's harassing. I'm just I'm just curious. What? I no, no, nothing I, hostile. Just curious. I haven't said anything one way or the other. I mean, are you planning on doing it? Uh, you know, I just he just invited me, so we'll see. And I think you should, though. Uh, well, we'll give it some. We'll give it some. Thought. Okay. Okay. And what do you have to say to people who think they're vaccine injured? Uh, come on. Anything for them? I don't come to my house. Anymore. I mean, do you have anything to say to people that think? Do you have anything to say to people? Yeah. I mean, do you think vaccine injuries are real, Peter? Peter, it's just a question. So that last clip is being characterized along with some of the Twitter pile on that's happened now that Elon Musk and some of these big ticket figures have gotten into the mix as harassment. It's seen as undue focus on this scientist um, that is coercive and perhaps even dangerous. Now, here's the thing. Everybody's weighing into this question of whether or not people could debate. And in the, in the course of it, people are saying some kind of wild stuff from my perspective. Like, science isn't about debate. And you can hear uh, Dr. Hotez saying this on Mehdi Hassan's show last night. Well, I think science, the debate in science is framed in the context of peer-reviewed journals. That's fair enough. And, and Hotez kind of acknowledges that on Mehdi Hassan's show and elsewhere. But it does seem odd at a certain point for there to be all of these claims about how easily debunked certain kinds of information are where no one who has decades of expertise in doing so is willing to step up to the plate and simply do it. And what that does, I, I appreciate the, the counter argument that people are putting out there is, well, someone like Joe Rogan or RFK Jr., they have a different kind of skill other than scientific expertise. They are debaters. They are politicians. They are wordsmiths. And it's not fair to ask a scientist to be good, not at science, but at this other skill where if you fail, you could look like you're losing even if substantively on the merits you're right. And so I, I take that. I, I take that criticism. I take that argument. But are you saying that there's not a scientist in America, there's not a virologist in America who is equipped also rhetorically, linguistically to make their case? And are we also saying that it isn't so clear that what Rogan is saying is scientifically and what RFK Jr. is saying is so scientifically baseless that it's impossible just to say, okay, what studies are you looking at? Here is why you're misinterpreting them, or here is why they represent a very small minority of studies that exist in the world, and get some clarification. Because at this point, I think that there's a lot of onus on journalists to now become scientists and debaters in order to get into the fray that has been abandoned by so many scientists with expertise that I'm interested to hear about. Sure, uh, absolutely. So to the last clip, um, is it harassing? It looked like he was confronting him in a, a, a public area before he goes into his property. So no, but you know, I don't really love the tactic of chasing down people to their homes and confronting them this way. Obviously, sometimes that's something you have to do, but it didn't seem called for here. If that was all we were talking about, I'd say, yeah, that's not a 
friendly, neighborly tactic. Um, but uh, uh, to your broader question, you're absolutely right. And if he's not the guy to do the debate, then maybe he can recommend someone sure. who is, because it's clearly an important debate to have. He has time to go on, and, and like he has time to go on friendly Mehdi Hassan show and complain about how how this is the whole. This is not science. Like science is sac sacrosanct. The way they're talking about it, it sounds like religion rather than science. No, it's it's not the the priesthood, the higher people, they decide on truth, and then it's not your right to question or scrutinize that. Um, even if, and e so I don't accept that framing, and then even if science, even if that framing was correct for science, then the policy implications yes. are totally different. It could yes. be, well, we're all decided on what the science says, but then where the, it should be required and what the trade-offs should be, and then, and, and, and then the, the science of public opinion and how you influence people to make the good decision in keeping with science is totally something different that they have no expertise in. But I don't actually even feel that way about underlying science. It should be open for debate. There's, when you look at these things closely, you find out that there's a whole lot of studies that often reach different conclusions. And then when you look at them really closely, which you're right, takes a different set of skills sometimes than raw, you know, crossfire style, you know, in the arena for debating. Sure. Yeah. Um, there, there's a there's a lot of noise and a lot of confusion. A lot of well, this doesn't quite measure that because here's what they did. A lot in the in the in the social studies and like social psychology studies are retracted constantly because when they duplicate the results, they can't right. get them right. because there's a lot of creative, you know, j jumping around. Um, and, and then further, I would say maybe you, maybe he doesn't like Rogan or doesn't trust Rogan because Rogan is is clearly very sympathetic and much more sympathetic to RFK Jr.'s views. But a three-hour podcast is a better venue, frankly, yes. for hammering out um, these kinds of, of differences than really almost any other venue because there's not enough time. Like yeah. we could host a debate on our show, but even if you know we stretch it, let it go for 20 minutes, well, it's still 20 <laughs> minutes yeah. and we're interjecting. And it's like, I, it, it can't be, especially for very complicated questions, I don't think it's a good format. And, and we still do better than almost anywhere else in cable news where it's like, three minutes for a segment. And to be fair to Dr. Hotez, he says he will, he has been on Rogan, I believe, twice before, and he says he's willing to go mm -hmm. back. And there is an argument that Joe Rogan definitely could queue up Rogan, uh, sorry, uh, RFK Jr.'s statements and have him respond piece by piece to what he has already said sure. on the show and basically get to the same result without RFK Jr. being in the room. I'm not like so committed to the necessity of RFK Jr. being mm. in the room, although I do think it could be instructive and helpful. RFK Jr. is not someone who is overly aggressive in debates or who wouldn't, I think, allow Dr. Hotez to talk. I don't think he has concern about getting talked over or anything like that. But part of my frustration as a layperson observing this is so much of this discourse is now taken up by, is it right to believe this? Is it right to say this? Is it right to debate this? Where we could just be spending time talking about the substance of what people are saying. Something that I am now having to do in a way that's very frustrating. And to your point earlier, I. There have for there has been a, for a very long time. I, when I was a history of science major, I thought I was going to be a science journalist. I interned at Science Magazine one summer in college. Like I, there there are significant problems with scientists who write papers that have a whole variety of results and conclusions that the media, the AP, will print up. Uh, new research shows cholesterol is deadly. Don't eat eggs. And then we, three years later, oh, actually they were measuring the wrong kind of cholesterol and it turns out that eggs are really good for you and people who eat you know, two eggs a day outlive everybody else. How many times have we seen the back and forth with eggs and coffee and glasses of wine and bars of uh, uh, non-milk chocolate? Mm -hmm. And it's not that the science necessarily was always wrong. Sometimes the science was wrong. Sometimes the conclusions of the study were interpreted overly broadly. But sometimes it'll be the same study that's interpreted in different ways. So one of the things that's in contention right now with RFK Jr. is that there is a study about, there's, a, there's an argument about two kinds of mercury, the kind of environmental mercury and the kind of mercury that is now taken out of most, I think all childhood vaccines, but is still in a flu vaccine that is sometimes administered to pregnant women. Now, there's a study that that vaccine only when administered during the first semester during pregnant women hasn't had some, some correlation to uh, bad health outcomes, principally uh, higher rates of autism. Now, that's a very limited finding. So you could look at that study and say, it shows that from the risk for pregnant women of taking a flu vaccine is nil. Or you could look at that study and say, there needs to be more research about what happens mm -hmm. when you administer it in the first semester, tri trimester. I think it would be wrong to say, 
um, pregnant women shouldn't take vaccines because there's also a lot of risk associated with getting flu as a pregnant woman, right? You've got to take that into account. You've got to weigh the, weigh the risk rewards. But it might be reasonable to say, pregnant women, just wait to the second trimester before you get your flu, flu vaccine. There's another study about um, whether the, the mercury, the good mercury versus the bad mercury is processed by the body differently. And there's a study that says, oh, no, it's actually the case that the kind of mercury in vaccines gets eliminated, cleared from the body more quickly than the mercury you have in fish. So you shouldn't be as concerned as you are about the mercury that you get from fish. However, there is a study that not just measures how much mercury is in your blood, but because they did it on monkeys and not humans, could kill the monkeys and actually measure how much mercury had collected in the brain. And in that case, that gives you a very different right. picture of results. So I need scientists grappling with this stuff so old little old me <laughs> doesn't have to be saying, well, one group of people is saying the study claims one thing. One group of people is saying the study is claiming another thing. I think on some big, broad issues like there has been no causal relationship established between vaccines and autism. Yes, that is absolutely true. And I think people are right to criticize RFK Jr. for sometimes suggesting otherwise. But having pat conclusive statements like you just have to trust the science, especially after there's been so much back and forth around COVID vaccines and what they can and cannot do, it's just going to strike people like you're trying to hide and cover up the truth. And I think it's gonna grow people's skepticism in a way that could lead to bad outcomes like low vaccine, um, uh, fear and for people right. taking vaccines who uh, are children and you get measles outbreaks and things like that. That can kill a lot of people. They're at the level of this question has been decided for you, yeah. so it's not open for debate. We have, th this is not something you can have a different opinion on. We've settled it, don't ask any questions, which is a very, um, outdated, I think, way of seeing, you know, it used to be media, government in less polarized time, in times where there were honestly fewer alternative media out platforms to compete for people to just spout off and say what they think. Maybe you could manufacture this idea that this is a settled question. That's just, that's not something you can do anymore. Yeah. I think it's, it can be beneficial, it can be harmful, but it can also be beneficial for society that that's not something you can do anymore. They're operating in this, uh, and by they, I mean Dr. Hotez, Mehdi Hassan type people operating in this world where they can just say, nope, the we're not debating yeah. it because there's no debate. Joe Rogan is the most popular media platform in America. Sure. If you choose not to engage with what he's saying, it, there's no platform or deplatforming. There's no, well, the conversation will go away. People are saying things like, well, I wouldn't debate a flat earther. It's like, well, sure. But if the flat earth movement got to a point where 11 million people or whatever it is that mm -hmm. tune into Joe Rogan every week are being convinced by a so-called expert that flat eartherism is true, it might be worthwhile if you are an astronaut that's been to space and looked out of the big ball <laughs> just to show up and say, hey, guys, remember gravity? Remember how the horizon line curves? Remember how I was in space? What, right. What's the harm of I, I don't know. I'm really struggling with the idea that allowing some of the toxic stuff to fester unchecked is really going to have the effect of dampening it in any way. Right. You, you, and it used to be a little bit easier to, well, if we don't talk about it, it's not being talked about because yeah. there wasn't a platform to talk Absolutely. about it. They can't do that anymore. Yeah. Yeah. More rising right after this.